What's up everybody, Michael Silva here to do some technical analysis on the S&P 500. We're going to be mapping out supports, resistance, and ultimately trying to decide where this market might be headed next. Let's get into it. All right, welcome back. The S&P 500 started the week off on a positive note up nine dollars but fell short within inches of the all-time record high the chief u.s equity strategist of goldman sachs came out and changed the tune to his 2020 forecast saying that he believes that the s p 500 still has about seven percent more to go by year's end that would put the s p 500 approximately around thirty six hundred dollars by year's end but it was also stated in the article that there remains a lot of risk around the 2020 presidential election now i make these videos monday through friday five days a week and Saturdays, I go over my weekly scan, the watch list of stocks that I keep an eye on. So if you haven't subscribed, be sure to do it. I appreciate that support. What do we got going on here on the daily time frame for the S&P 500? Well, we still have a rising wedge pattern taking place, which is ultimately bearish. We also have a double top coming into play, which is ultimately bearish. These last five trading days have struggled to make it to the all time high but it does seem like the stock market will eventually get there. My personal belief is that this is still a buy the dip, sell the rip type of market. This green line down here is 3,200, represents the short term floor where I would be looking at potentially buying into if we get a pullback to that level. More of a major floor would be that 3,000, which is the base here of the rising wedge pattern. If we start getting closes below that level, it would signal that the market has the potential to fall lower. Now, what could send this market significantly lower? Well, if you haven't been paying attention, the dollar has been sinking day after day and is struggling to get above 94. Now, when I talk about the dollar, I'm looking at the DXY and it still looks like it has room to fall. Now, as the dollar is going down and the stock market is moving higher and higher, this oddly resembles to me what took place in Zimbabwe in early 2000. They had the Zimbabwe dollar falling through the floor while the stock market was reaching all time record highs day after day, week after week, and month after month until the Zimbabwe dollar ultimately went into hyperinflation and the market then took a turn for the worst. Now, Zimbabwe dollar is not the world reserve currency, so there is significant differences in that. But there are still economists out there that believe the US dollar can collapse and fail as the US reserve currency. Now I'm getting off topic because this is a technical analysis episode. So let's go ahead and hop into the technicals here on the daily time frame. If you've watched these videos recently, you probably are looking at this indicator down here wondering what it is. This is a new indicator that I just wanted to pull up on the screen. It's known as a volume accumulation percentage indicator. In short, it helps show divergences within the market and it's all volume based. This was developed by a coder lazy bear here on trading view i'm going to put the link in the description where you can add this to your favorites if you use trading view as well and it's very simple you would just go to the link and make it a favorite and then you can go to your indicators tab and add it as one of your indicators as well but why am i pointing this out well notice how the volume really peaked out here at about 60.11 and now we've been seeing it kind of die off these last few trading days here and yet the stock market has been rising higher from that point. So we have a little bit of a negative divergence taking place within this, within this volume accumulation percentage indicator. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that the stock market is gonna pull back right now. We can easily see a turn up, but it is worth noting, especially if the volume keeps going lower and lower, falls negative below zero, while the price continues to move higher. That would indicate that we have volume leaving, but the price action is moving higher, which could mean that this rising wedge pattern is coming close to breaking down. As far as where it could potentially break down to, 3,200 is that level that I want to keep an eye on. It also right around here at 3,280 looks like a potentially good area to accumulate a position as well if you are buying the dips. Now I have the MACD indicator up and I wanted to point out the negative divergence here as well. As you can see right from this island reversal pattern, we had a low high to a higher high, but on the MACD, we have a high high to a lower high. 
These are worth noting because they could potentially feed more into the narrative that that pullback will eventually be coming. Now, this does not mean that you just sell off all your positions and get out of the market completely. What it means is we're looking at a potential turning point where we might be able to start adding hedges to our long positions because it does seem like we're coming to a point where we're going to have increased volatility and a spike to the downside. Is that 100% probable? No, nothing in this market is 100% probable, but it is still worth noting and being careful and cognizant of what these patterns is trying to tell us. Let's go ahead and hop into the 30 minute time frame to zoom in on today's price action. All right, so we are here looking at the 30 minute time frame of today's price action. This blue vertical line going down the screen represents where the day started and every candle thereafter represents 30 minutes of data. So what do we have take place? Well, we had a gap up and really, nothing thereafter. We saw some sideways movement and it kind of created this little curve that looks kind of like it's topping out where it might continue more to the downside. Now this could just be an ultimate fake out and we see a gap above this area of resistance that has struggled through today and a move to the all time record high, or we might potentially see this downwards momentum continue. So what we need to do is map out some supports and resistance on this 30 minute time frame to set us up for tomorrow's trading day. Now this black line up here, that is just the all time record high. What we're gonna do now is look at areas of support that the price could potentially fall down to and then areas of resistance. The first area of support I wanna map out is right here at 33.78. Why is it right there? Well, clearly we saw some resistance happen previously in the chart right here. And then the candle today, about an hour in, pulled down to just about that range. We also have the 50 period moving average that's kind of sloping up, which does typically act as an area of support and or resistance, depending where the price action is. So that is gonna be our first level of support. The second level is going to be right here. I'm just gonna call it 33.72.50. But the reason there is because that is where the window took place on this gap up. So we gapped way up from this previous candle and that would ultimately mean that the gap gets filled if the price reaches down to 33.72 tomorrow. Not only is this a level of resistance, but it also acted as an area of support. So our two areas of support heading into tomorrow is 33.78 and 33.72. The MACD indicator did just recently cross over, which is negative for the price action. However, it did cross over and it is still above zero, so that can change heading into tomorrow. The level of resistance that I wanna keep an eye on is going to be right here at 33.86.47, or you can call it 33.86.50 if you'd like, but clearly we acted as resistance in the first 30 minutes, and then we acted again about an hour and a half in, and then we had about two hours straight, maybe even more, trying to knock that wall down and close above it. So if we get a close above this tomorrow, that should act as an area of support and then move to the all time record high. Now this last two and a half hours of trading was quite bearish and it had some somewhat of contradicting candles. We had a hammer candle on a pullback which could represent a bounce point, but then the very next candle is inverted, which ultimately says that the price wants to head a little bit lower. So some indecision taking place. We have the MACD that just crossed over. Where is this going to take place tomorrow? I guess we'll find out, but these are the levels that we need to keep an eye on while trading. So what would you do if you were trading? I've been saying that this is the buy the dip, sell the rip type of market. So what I'm looking for is areas of supports that the price action could pull back to. So in my personal opinion, where would I want to trade? Well, if we get the pull down to this gap window, that would offer up a very good risk first reward trade. I would want to enter in right around here. I'd have a tight stop loss, probably below the low of this high right here. So maybe at 33.71 or 33.70.96, say. Wherever you feel more, most comfortable, depending on your risk tolerance. And then what I'd want to do is potentially capture a trade or a bounce back up to this area of resistance. That would be the trade that I'm looking for heading into tomorrow. If we get a close above this 33.86, that could potentially mean that we'll see a continuation to the upside. So you could buy in right here and on a breakout and then have a tight stop loss there. Because typically what you see happen is you might see a pullback and a retest, or it might break out, but be a false breakout and not get a full close above it. That's all I have for you on today's S&P 500 technical analysis update. I will see you back tomorrow.